guns. Guns. Indeed, lots of guns. Looking at guns today, it's pretty obvious why we use them, but it's not always been that case in history. Yes, guns. Now, if you're looking at a history of warfare, there isn't actually a huge amount of difference between medieval war and ancient war. You're still talking about cavalry, infantry, archers, swords, spears, etc. The game changer is often seen as gunpowder. And the first time it becomes pivotal to an event in world history is the siege of Constantinople in 1453. Now, the walls of Constantinople had held firm and resisted many attempts to invade for over a thousand years. And then the Ottomans, under Conqueror Mehmet, managed to shatter those walls with cannons and break in, and the rest, as they say, is history. But what I find interesting is clearly looking at those early firearms. They, they were not as good as bows. Fair enough, you could knock down a wall. Sieges were improved vastly by gunpowder. But fundamentally, battles themselves, you could do a better job with cavalry than a bunch of musket men. And yet, they were adopted. And for hundreds of years, warfare, if you like, went backwards. Uh, the, the weapons were less efficient. But they stuck with them. Why? First off, I lied a little bit. There is actually a difference between ancient bows and medieval longbows or the eastern composite bows. They were more powerful and they could go further and pierce armour in certain situations. But it took a long time to train on them. So quite often in Central Europe, you had the crossbowmen. The Genoese crossbowmen were famous throughout Europe. However, the problem with the crossbow is it took maybe up to a minute to reload. Therefore, with one or two shots a minute, why not change to the more modern technology of gunpowder? The first form of muskets were matchlocks, basically fuses that were used to fire off these tubes of gunpowder. But later on, they developed into more elegant weapons. But still, even though we're into the 19th century, it still took up to a minute to sometimes reload them. One, two shots a minute, and that was the best you're going to get, up to and including the US Civil War. Undeniably, on land, sieges were improved with cannons, and over the centuries they became more and more efficient, and fortifications had to change fundamentally to withstand the blasts from such beasts. Similarly, on sea, warfare was improved by cannons, and we all know what a battleship looked like in the 17th or 18th centuries. However, it wasn't until the late 19th century, with the invention of gun cotton and modern-day bullets and rifles, that we get weapons that can be fired rapidly and that can hit a target over a longer distance than a longbow could. It took centuries to get to the machine gun, when suddenly two guys could kill a host of enemy soldiers. And now, soldiers around the world use automatic or semi-automatic weapons. In essence, one guy can kill an entire platoon or company of another guy's with one of these weapons, something that simply couldn't have happened in the 11th century. Add to this night vision and telescopic sights, and quite frankly, you could fight whenever you wanted to. A new revolution on the battlefield. So, guns. It's interesting. They have their uses. Obviously, it takes less time to train somebody to hold a fuse and put it onto a metal tube and watch it go bang than spending years getting the upper body strength to become a longbowman. However, recently psychologists, and I do like this fact, have discovered that fundamentally human beings don't like killing each other. So having a weapon that's loud, noisy, produces smoke, it's scary, and it will scare away the enemy troops just as often as it will necessarily kill them. It was interesting to note that in the 19th century when they were testing how good the muskets were, they were firing them at white sheets of of material, and they realised that basically you couldn't hit anything after 100 yards, and yet people were blasting away sometimes at 200 yards, 300 yards. They were never going to hit anything, but they were going to cause enough noise to sometimes make the enemy troops run away scared. So everybody got to play another time. I like that fact, and I will leave that with you. Thank you for watching.
If you like this, there's always more. At History Gems is on Twitter and on Facebook, where every day there's some history goodness. And of course, there's now The Busy Person's Guide to British History, the book I've written, which is available on Amazon both as a book and as an e-book on Kindle.